Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. For today's project we're going to have a bit of fun and create this forget-me-not photo frame made completely from polymer clay. So the actual frame itself is made from polymer clay. It's got a hinge on the back and I'll show you how to do all of that and how to get it finished like this and then we'll also create the decoration to go around the outside. I've wanted to do a photo frame for a long time, particularly because you can make really nice small ones to create the size for a particular photo you've got and just to make something a little bit more special and a little bit more personal. I'm going to separate this one into three sections. The first part is going to deal with making the actual frame itself and as I take you through I'm going to do mine from scrap clay but if you haven't got scrap clay you could of course use brand new packets of clay but I would suggest a darker colour and if you don't have either of those you could of course make it from some, some nice thick cardboard, the sort of cardboard you use in mount frames for pictures and you could use the template I'm going to show you and make it out of cardboard because of course the cardboard will bake in the oven absolutely fine because polymer clay bakes at nice low temperatures. So that'll be section one. Section two, I'll take you through the petal cane and the leaf cane. Although if you don't want to make a cane, you can of course just use plain coloured clay and I will show you how to make it and reduce it in the shape to create the same effect. And then the final section will be where we decorate the outside, create this gold background effect and put all the little flowers and leaves on top and I will take you through all of that. The whole point of this is to have fun, enjoy yourself. At any stage you can go off piste and do your own thing. You don't have to do the forget-me-nots, but obviously with the name like forget-me-not I thought it was perfect to put on the outside of a photo frame. So we'll start by going through the equipment and the clay, and then we'll move on to section one where I take you through making the frame. For today's project you will need a polymer clay blade, I often refer to these as tissue blades, a craft knife, something like a cable needle, this is a 4mm one, doesn't have to be this size but just something which helps you position clay and move it around, a roller, either an ordinary flat one or a brayer roller which is one I use, we only need it in one place just to put some clay on some tile, a cocktail stick, when I stick the layers of polymer clay together I'm going to use liquid polymer clay and I've just decanted some into a little bottle to make it easier to use. Sometimes I put it on with my finger, sometimes I put it on with a small paintbrush. If you haven't got any liquid polymer clay you could use PVA glue for what we are doing today but this gives a better bond and a better um, cement between the two layers. When we're cutting the clay you need something straight and quite solid to cut against. This is a ruler where all the markings have um, come away so I just use this as a tool to cut against. When we're doing our leaf cane it's sometimes handy to have a little bit of texture on it. You don't have to um, but you can do. You can buy leaf textures online and they come like this with, with two sides. I've made my own simply because they were too big and I've done this with the two part moulding putty, moulding silicon um, and I do one on one side of the leaf and then another one on the other side and I will generally put an arrow on them so that when I've got one down one side I know which way to put the other one on, on top. So if you want to do those you can, you don't need any texture, it's just if you wanted to add a little something in the leaves of the piece. When we work and we're baking the photo frame itself, I will be working on tiles. Now I've got quite a few tiles, these are just general six inch ones, um, and I will be using one tile to put a piece on, and then I turn the other tile upside down to effectively sandwich it whilst I'm baking to keep it nice and flat. And because I've got three pieces, I'm going to effectively have six tiles worth. If of course you don't have six tiles, you can fit them onto a single larger tile if you've got two of those and then put another tile on top or if you've just got two tiles just do one block at a time put another bit on top bake it take that off and do the next piece and the next piece um, whichever you've got to hand and whichever works best for you on a couple of places we need to support the clay and the clay i'm putting through is about two and a half millimeters thick on the layers that i'm doing so i found a piece of cardboard that's the same thickness as my clay and I simply cut sheets out of this for the size I need to support the clay as I go. In a couple of places I just measure the canes, we don't really need this too much today but in case you do I do use a measuring sheet, this one is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net. I've just laminated so I can use it several times. 
I've done the four squares to one inch, but you can also get it in centimetres if you would prefer. To make life easy for you, I have done a full template for the photo frame, and this is freely available on my website, and I'll put a link on the details below the video so you can go and download it. It is a PDF, and all you need to do is to cut out the three pieces. I originally worked on this being a four inch square or 10 centimeters, but I noticed when um, downloading the PDF, it's come out just fractionally smaller, um, but it's still a good size. And then of course, once you've got these, you can just up it or down it to scale, depending on what size you want. To create the gold crackle on the piece, I'm going to use this faux gold leaf, and you can buy this online, you can get sheets of this, and I will effectively be using one sheet of this. And obviously you can do gold, you can do silver, bronze, whatever colours you want, but that is available from most craft stores and also online as well. To finishing off to put our photo in, I'm just going to use some thinnish card, sort of cardstock you use for doing um, homemade cards, and a little bit of acetate, clear acetate sheets, and that will just create Rather than having glass in our photo frame, I'll just use this sheet. To support the bracket on the back, we're just going to add a little bit of ribbon. I've just used a brown ribbon because I thought it fitted in with the dark underside that I wanted. And then just a little bit of super glue just to add that. And it's the final thing we do when we put the whole piece together. To put the bracket on the back, we're going to need a hinge. Um, you can source these online. If you look under doll's house hinges or miniature hinges you can get them and you want ones that are going to go completely flat over on one side and we're just going to attach that to the back of our piece and to do that we need screws now the ones the screws that came with these hinges were too wide to fit through the polymer clay I wanted something much shorter so again I went online and I found this box of miniature screws and that's what I put in the search engine and I found one which has a set which includes ones that are so tiny that they will actually fit and just sit nicely in the thickness of clay we're doing so again that's something you can search for online and they come with a little Phillips screwdriver which is handy as well so you can help put them in to make the holes just put in first I've just got a little drill bit here and again this comes from miniature work doll's house stuff the little miniature um, screw or model making you can look look for them under model making a nice thin screw bit to give me some guide holes to put in and if it's something you're just doing for yourself then of course you could just use a form of the um, the gaffer tape the thick tape and by gaffer tape I mean duct tape gaffer tape this sort of stuff where it's reinforced um, tape which gives you a good bond. If I was doing something like that then I'll just do it on a tile for now. I would put my bracket on where I wanted it to go, mark on my piece where it goes up to so you can then see where the line is, cut yourself a couple of pieces of tape. So first of all the underneath piece and obviously if you're doing this you'll cut it neat and cut off any of the excess. Put that piece back and get the second piece, put that on top and then you have basically a hinge with the gaffer tape which will hold up your piece. As always I work on a large tile I will be using biodegradable wet wipes and tissues to clean my hands and work equipment as I go along but just a simple wet cloth would work instead if you don't want to use wet wipes and I always use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. When we're baking our final piece, I will use some aluminium foil to tent the whole piece in to make sure it doesn't burn should the oven spike during baking. I think that's it, so let's move on to the clay we need for today's project. I'm using Fimo Soft for today's project, but all recognised or well-known brands of polymer clay will work just as well. So, to create the flowers and the leaves, I'm using a mixture of colours, so I'm not using colours direct from the pack. Um, because obviously in nature the colours are much softer than the colours we get direct from the pack. And forget-me-nots in particular, most flowers which we see as blue are actually more of a sort of a, a purpley, sort of um, soft shade of blue. So because of that, I've gone for lilac and pacific blue and white to make the colours. Now I've split these down into small amounts, so each of these lines is one sixteenth of the normal small packs of clay. So that works out to about three and a half grams or an eighth of an ounce of clay. And I've put them together in lines so it makes it easier when you're doing your preparation at home. 
If you're not using Fimo Soft, then use similar colours in the other brands and you should get the same sort of mix. But just experiment. Do a little bit of each one in small amounts of whichever brand you're using um, and just see how the colour works out and then you can build it up to get slightly more. And I would say, as is normal, we're going to get much more of the leaf and the little petal cane that we're going to do here than we need just to make one photo frame. So if you want to use small amounts, that's fine and you can just experiment and do what you want to do. So if we start with a petal, so I've got two strips of lilac and one of the Pacific blue and we're going to mix those together to make a soft but slightly darker blue colour. I've got two strips of the white, one of lilac and as you can see about a, a quarter or so slightly less than a quarter of that amount of a strip of the Pacific blue and again mix all those together to give you another soft blue. Just a single strip of white and then to make the little tiny buds of the forget-me-nots we're going to use half of a strip of plum and half of the Pacific blue again. Then we need for the centres just a very small amount of sunflower yellow and a very small amount of chocolate brown. For the leaves we again we want a nice sort of soft um, olivey colour but it's, it's a so it's a nice soft colour um, when we're blending the leaves and we're going to do a blend of three colours um, and then have a little bit of white as well so I've got a single strip of white that will go in the middle then we have got one whole stripe of olive green a whole stripe of white three quarters of olive green with a little bit of brown and that gives us a nice darker olivey green shade then for another shade we're going to go one strip of olive green two strips of white probably about two thirds yellow and one third of the Pacific blue and that gives us a blue tone towards the olive green and then we're going to go for a nice soft sort of slightly more grey tone so we're going to go one strip of the white half of white half of olive green or probably about four fifths of lilac and just a tiny little bit again of the Pacific blue and each of these will be conditioned in these separate amounts and when I condition my clay I normally do it on the pasta machine if it's a large amount obviously these two little bits I'll do separately by hand and on my pasta machine I will normally condition on setting three and on my machine naught is thick and nine is thin so I'll get all of those conditioned and set the colours up here on setting number three to give myself sheets because we're going to do a Skinner blend with these two and a Skinner blend with those three so I'll get all those conditioned and ready, but before we do that, we're going to do the base of our photo frame. So for the base, I'm going to use a scrap clay. Now I've got about two and a half or two and three quarter packs of small packs equivalent of scrap clay here. So that's about 150 grams or about five or just over five and a half ounces of clay. I will condition this in smaller amounts and then amalgamate them so I've got three squares large enough to use for our template and I'll come on to that in a moment but again I will condition this on setting number three of my pasta machine when I'm starting off then when I'm putting my sheets together to cut the template from I'm going to go to a thicker setting so on my machine I'm using setting number two if you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay or you want some hints and tips and techniques on how to use a pasta machine to get the clay nicely conditioned quickly then I do have a video tutorial on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one As I mentioned earlier, I have created this template for you. So I've taken this and I've cut out our three shapes. And we actually want four pieces of clay. We're going to have a background sheet that is as big as this without the cutout in the middle. Then we're going to have one like this with the cutout in the middle, one like this, and this is the stand for the back of the photo frame. So effectively we need three sheets of clay big enough to take the template and what I've got is I've already got that conditioned and I use these smaller tiles I've got a six inch tile and I've just cut myself a piece of clay on that setting number two big enough to take my sheet and when I have the clay when I'm setting it on the tile either with a brayer roller or with your ordinary roller I will just gently roll over to make sure there's no air trapped underneath as I push it down and I've done that three times and have my three sheets of clay ready to go 
and I've got them all on separate tiles because I'm going to leave the clay in place once I've cut it on the tile. So as I mentioned, the first one just needs to be a flat sheet this size. And what I do for this is with the blunt end of my craft knife, I'm just going to score on the sheet where the corners are. And normally I would do this looking right over the top, but obviously I can't do that at the moment because I would have my head in the way and you wouldn't see what I'm doing. But hopefully I can do it from this angle. And then with a flat sided ruler, I will put that in position and simply cut away using the score lines as my markers. So there's our first piece done and as I mentioned before because I have a number of tiles when I bake this I'm simply going to put another tile on top to keep it nice and flat and I will stack up my effectively six tiles in the end and put them in all stacked together in the oven at the same time. But that's my first sheet. The second sheet is the same template but this time I'm also going to mark the inner corners and then I'll cut the outside first and then I'll cut out the inner side, lift that up so we get left with the frame. When I'm cutting the inner corners I will go with my point of my craft knife slightly above to get a nice smooth cut. Don't worry about that because we are eventually going to cover this outside with another layer of clay. So there's our outside piece and again I'll put a tile flat on that um, and bake that in our sandwich. And for our last piece, carefully lay your sort of C-shaped piece. And for this piece, we're also going to take our middle piece out of the same one. So leave this off to one side to start with. Mark all around the piece in exactly the same way as before. Cut the outside edges away. Cut the inside edges, but then don't peel the middle bit away. So now with our clay still in place, we can just sit this on the bottom edge and just as before, mark it out and cut away the excess. And now that piece also has the stability to have a tile placed flat on top of it. If I hadn't put this piece here, then I would have put a piece of cardboard in just to support the edge so that the tile sitting on top wouldn't have splayed this piece down too much. So all of those pieces can be baked according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. All your leftover scrap pieces keep because we're going to use those to create the pattern on the outside of our photo frame. Normally whilst the piece was baking, I would say start making your um, petal cane and leaf cane, but because I've already got some pieces ready, I'm going to go move straight on to show you how to do the next part of the photo frame. So the pieces have come out of the oven, um, and because I was doing this sort of like a couple of days ago in preparation, I have taken them all off the tiles. However, if you can, it's actually easier to leave this flat piece stuck to the tile. If it comes off, it doesn't matter, but if it's stuck on there, it just gives you a nice firm base to work on. So we're going to put these together with that on the bottom, this piece on top, and then this piece sits on top of that and we're just going to glue those together. This piece isn't needed at this stage to put it to one side and keep it safe. However, when we are baking, obviously we haven't got anything here to support this piece. So if we just put it in like that, that could well dip down during baking. So I have cut myself a piece of card that is the right height, as I mentioned, for the thickness of clay that I'm working with, that I can put that in place there and whilst we bake it will sit inside and it will support this top piece. So I've made it so it's slightly smaller, can you see there, 
so it will fit nicely in so that any of the liquid clay that sticks out of here isn't going to get stuck to this and before I bake I will move this around to check that it's still movable and then we will bake this piece so what I'm going to do is I've got my little pot of decanted um, liquid clay here and I'm just going to paint it on the edge here fit this piece on paint on top there fit that piece on and the only other thing I will have is a um, biodegradable wet wipe or a clean cloth or tissue um, just wet so that when I put this piece on I can move away any excess liquid clay so it doesn't stick to the card when we bake so I will fast forward through that piece for you Okay, there we are ready to go. So as you saw, I have checked that this will move nicely inside and then all we need to do as before is put another tile on top and again, because I've got the tiles there, I don't need to cover with foil because that will protect that and as before, bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And we'll come back when we've got that piece done. So there we go, that piece is now finished baking and it is cooled and when it was cooling I checked that I could still move this piece in and out and it's working perfectly so that's good and it's still protecting that edge. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little hinge on the back. I find it easier to put this bracket on the back at this stage before I do all the decoration on the front because obviously the decoration is, is can be fragile with all the petals and all the leaves and things so I think do all that first rather than having to sort of screw things in whilst that is there in place. So turn it onto the back because we've got this piece in here it's quite handy so we know that that is that way up and you're going to open your bracket and you want to be able to fit it on so that it goes completely closed so check because most of them don't close completely one way so you want it the way it's going to go completely closed having got that just center it at the top of your bit that sticks from the back and then with I've got a little right sized drill piece here, just mark the holes and just drill a little way, not all the way through. Okay, and once they are properly in place, we can now fit the piece on the back. So put it so that it's flat at the bottom of your piece can whilst it's in place pulling down the little bracket just then very quickly and carefully mark your holes and then as before just drill your holes I'm just holding it and I'm putting my finger under the card just for a bit of extra stability so I'm not putting too much force down on the clay as before drill the holes and put the screws in. Okay, and there is your bracket in place. That allows your photo frame to stand up. So we will put, the last thing we'll do when we've finished everything else is we glue the piece of ribbon on to stop this going too wide so it doesn't sort of slip. And of course, if you were doing it properly, you could sort of put a, a slight angle on this so it would sit more easily. But with the ribbon in place, it sits absolutely fine and it's not a problem. So, our photo frame is now ready to go. And the last thing I've done is I've just cut myself a couple of strips of the cardboard. The same thickness as this one. Effectively, when I work from this point on, I can sit that underneath. So it's going to support this nicely and I'm not putting any pressure or bending the clay as I work. So, there is our piece completely ready to decorate, so let's move on to the flower or petal canes. Although, as I say, if I'd been doing this in normal, real time, whilst this was baking, I would have been getting on with those in the meantime. So I've mixed our colours together. So 
So that was the darker colour which we're going to use for our petal, and that was the lighter colour, and this was the, the darker purpley blue that we're going to use for the, pet, the little bud. So I'll put that to one side at the moment. I've done the um, white clay through. These two have gone through on setting number three, as I mentioned. The white clay I've put through and ended up going through on setting number five, so it's a thinner setting. And then the yellow and the brown I've simply rolled into logs for now, and we'll come back to those later when we're putting the whole of the pattern together. But to make the petal cane, it's a very simple cane. I'm going to do a Skinner blend between these two colours, and I'm just going diagonally across but offsetting slightly, so as you can see I haven't quite gone to the corners here. And the reason for that is that I don't want the mix to go right across the middle. I want to have a little bit of each colour showing at either end. So as per normal, we'll put it back through, fold bottom to top, and put it back through the pasta machine, constantly putting the fold through first. And I will pinch that down as well. And because I've got four layers of clay here, I'm going to go up a thicker setting on my pasta machine. So that will be setting number two for me. As it comes through, I collect and fold, collect and fold until I have a nice smooth blend. And anyone unsure about doing a Skinner Blends or wants to know how to get a, a fairly nice rectangular shape, I do have a tutorial on that on YouTube. And again, I'll put a link to that in the details below this video. So I'll start putting that through and bring you back when we've got a nice smooth blend from one colour to the next. So there we go. So having got it at this stage, I'm going to chop it into two or three even pieces. So we'll do that like that, put that one on top, and then I will just add that one on top of there. Having pinched the end, I'm going to put it back through on setting number two to give myself a longer, thinner strip. And having done that, I'll go back through my thinnest usable setting, dark end first again, to get the longest, thinnest strip I can. Um, however, if you know that your machine shreds or tears your clay, if you go straight down to the thinnest one, just go down one setting at a time until you get the longest, thinnest strip you can. OK, this is the clay, and all we're simply going to do is roll it up from the light blue end. As you can see, my strip is very untidy. Um, this was one I'd prepared earlier, so it had been sat for a day, so the clay wasn't as well conditioned as if I'd done it straight away. But I'm really not worried about these raggedy corners. When we start doing our cane, it'll all come together. And because it's a natural piece, you don't need to worry if every petal is slightly different from the preceding one. That actually makes it look more natural. So I'm just rolling it up, making sure there's no air trapped as I go. I'm just going to press down on the ends just to neaten it slightly and then we're going to put it into rough quarters just by seesawing down through and I say it has doesn't need to be exact because as I said this is a natural petal but having done our pieces as we've done in the past I'm just going to push up either side squidging and making it narrow in the bottom and do that with all four pieces put two together. Same with these ones. Put those together and now we can put all four pieces together. Now at the moment I'm just pressing from the bottom. But what I want to do at this stage is I want to move one of the blue, the dark blue edges slightly more round because we're going to cut this in half and put the two together. Um, but I want lighter in the middle and a darker at one side, which will make sense in just a second. So I'm going to do as I normally do, pull the tops together, but then turning it on one side, I'm going to press down, and with my thumb, can you see I'm forcing that blue more down towards what would be the point of our sort of triangular cane. And on this side, I'm actually doing the opposite and forcing the blue back, so there's more of the light colour showing. Because what we will then end up with is our normal sort of triangular cane. But when we put it together like that, we've got more of the blue coming around the outside, so the blue sort of tends to curl around. You'll also find with a forget-me-not cane, there's a little white stripe that goes down the middle and goes to a larger, whiter area in the bottom. And that's perfect, because you can see there we've actually got that in the middle already. So having put that on setting five, as I've already said, I'm just going to fit, sit it on one side, chop off the excess so it's the right side, so it's the right size, chop away down the bottom. And then because I want this to be a nice thin point, 
I'm just going to roll that flatter. And then we can put those two sides together. So the white hasn't gone right to the top. And then with the rest of the clay, I'm going to roll it up. And then just using my thumb and finger, create a little triangular shape. And that's just going to sit and press in at the bottom of our shape. Drop off the excess either side. And we now have that little bit of white at the bottom of our cane. So what we want to do now is reduce this down to it's the right size and right shape. And the easiest way to reduce a cane like this is to make it effectively into a diamond or a square shape. So I'm going to do that by pressing in with my fingers till we end up with something that's effectively a square. So these two are going to be a corner, that's going to be a corner, but I also want this to be a corner. So to start with, I'm just pressing in, forcing these into more of a corner. And once we've got these sides flat, you can turn it on its side and press up. Turn on the side and press up and automatically you will start to get that white middle coming into a point as well as we go into a square cane. And all I'm going to do now is just keep reducing it down. Now, we actually need this to be really nice and small for what we're doing. So what I will generally do is get it till it's about three inches long so about seven and a half centimetres, something like that, and chop it in half and only reduce one half at a time. So I'll end up with having different sizes of canes where only a small bit goes down to the tiny size we're using today. Because you can always go back and reduce the cane later, um, but obviously once you've made it small, if you then decided you wanted to do something big with it, you can't really get it bigger. So I'll just simply just roughly chop it in half. So you can see there the pattern that we're starting to get. And say so one bit will go on one side and I will carry on reducing one down. Now, what I'm going for actually is a square that's only about a quarter of an inch wide. So probably about um, between half and three quarters of a centimetre. So really, really small, which is why I'm only going to be doing a small amount of this um, as we go. And if obviously you wanted to make a smaller cane to start with, um, so you don't use so much clay, then just half or quarter the amounts I showed you at the start. But it is of course um, harder to show you the small amounts of clay at the start and it's easier for me as a tutorial to make a bigger cane. So I will carry on doing that. So each time I get to about three inches, I'll chop it in half, put one bit to one side and I'll carry on until I've got it down to a square cane that size that I showed you and then I'll show you how to change the shape of it to make it into a little forget-me-not petal. So once I've got it down roughly to that size you can see it's still a square cane all I need to do is round off the corner. So by doing that, I'm just gently with my fingers pressing into the sides to make it a rounder sided piece. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I don't want to point on the top. So with the pointed top end, I'm simply going to put it on my tile and just roll. So you're just rounding off the bottom edge. And then the last thing we're going to do is just very gently, just slightly reinforce, and it is just slightly, but reinforce that white as being the middle of the petal. So I'm just going along the whole length and doing that. And when I'm cutting the petals, as you'll see later on, I will generally cut however many I need, five or three, to do the little forget-me-not that we are doing, and then I will go back and look at the cane and look and see if it needs rounding off or reshaping at all. And what you should find, hopefully, when we chop through, is you've got a little forget-me-not petal. 
So let's go on and do the leaves now and this can go to one side ready for when we need to take our slices. I've mixed together the three greens for the leaf so this is how they came out so there's nice three um, amounts of green. If you're the sort of person who works with polymer clay a lot and have just got some of these sort of colours in your leftover bin or where bits have been amalgamated at the end just use those obviously don't use fresh new batches of clay but that's how the colours come out. The little piece of white we're going to put to one side to use later and I've also just taken off little bits of each of these three. We want to do a stem of the forget-me-not so I'm going to use that for that and we're going to use the white with a little bit of this cut off green from here just to give ourselves a little bit of a, a centre white line in the vein of the leaf when we get to that stage as well. And this bit just again it might come in handy so if you want to patch things or add a bit in it's, it's useful to have a little bit of these colours left over when you're doing things. But having done that, with the rest of these colours, we are going to do a Skinner blend. So I will do, as before, diagonally, though slightly offset, two end ones, and straight down the middle for the middle piece. Put them together like that. As before, fold in half press to give yourself a crease to go through, put through and keep folding and turning till we get a nice blend with those colours. And again, because I've got four layers here now, these had been on setting three, so I'll go up to that setting number two and bring you back when we've got the nice smooth blend from one side to another. So having got the blend done with that nice darker shade in the middle, as we did before, we're going to chop it into two or three pieces, layer them up, Having put them together, I'm pinching the ends. I'll put it back through on the same setting, so setting number two to give myself the longer, thinner strip. And then I'll do exactly as we did before and go down to my thinnest setting to give myself the very long, thin strip. And I'll bring you back when I've got to that stage. This time, rather than um, rolling, we're going to fold, we're going to concertina. Doesn't really matter on the size, um, but you don't want it too wide. So I'm going probably about three quarters of an inch, about two centimeters. Having got that, I'm going to make sure I've got no air trapped in the middle by just pressing down at the middle and then both top and bottom working through. And I'm making it swipe slightly longer because we're going to chop this in half. Just pressing down to give myself slightly neater square ends. And then either by eye or using a measuring sheet, chop it down and we're going to put it together so that the darker, brighter green is in the middle. And then we're going to press it together because now that's the pattern I'm having in either side of my leaf. Just gives a little bit of added variation. So now exactly the same again, we need to make it long enough that we can get two sides going together. And I also want to actually pull over the ends at this stage. So what I can do with the line running down the center, I'm just going to pull down and sort of get those two ends to meet. So they're almost covering over the colours in the middle. So again, we're almost going back to that sort of diamondy shape. And then because it's two sides of one leaves, we want one bit to be flat, so I'm going to press it flat down on my tile and then with my fingers really force one side over so I've got a flat on the bottom now and now I've got one side flat I can pull that to make it slightly wider again it doesn't matter if it's exactly the same all the way down the length because a leaf is a natural thing and if every slice is different that is absolutely fine but when it's got two so probably got about three inches just over three inches so probably about eight centimeters there I was going to take it and chop it down the middle and that'll be either side of our leaf and what we're going to do now is we are going to take the white clay take some of that lighter color that we've got here and probably just a small bit I'm just going to put that back through the pasta machine mixing the two colors until I get a nice new very soft slightly off-white green color so there we go a nice soft color and just as we did before with the petals I'm going to put it not quite up to the top on one side cut off the ends and the bottom 
and exactly the same. Just smooth that to give a nice thin point rather than a thick end. Put the other piece on. And it's the same with the leaves as it was with the petals. You've just got a little bit of an excess sort of triangular bit down the bottom, not a lot. So I was going to take a small piece. And again, as before, with my fingers, just make that into a triangular shape. And drop that in to the bottom of our leaf. And now we can start reducing this. And it's already, again, roughly rectangular. So I'm just going to emphasise that as I reduce it to get it slightly smaller. And I'm doing this till it's about half an inch, about just over one and a half centimetres, or just under one and a half centimetres rather, in width. Because obviously we've got a very square leaf at the moment and that's not a normal leaf shape. And when I've got it down there, all I need to do is press quite hard in both these sides to make it much narrower. So I'm just pressing down. And also pointing both the top and the bottom. Having really quite narrow and flat leaves. And I'm looking for them to be about an inch, two and a half centimetres, something like that. So we'll just chop through and see what we've got. There we go. And so there are the leaves for our forget-me-nots. So I'm just going to pull it very slightly longer. I only want a few, so I'm going to cut seven of these and I'll cut them and I'll get them textured now so that they're ready to go on our piece. So taking slices, I'm going to do them probably sort of about that thickness, but again, whichever thickness you want to use on yours is fine. They don't want to be too thin because they need to have some stability in the piece and we are just about to give them some texture as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for small leaves like this, I can then just sit them in the middle of that. Take my other piece. So I've put the arrows on to show me which way up it goes. Put that towards the top as well. And then when you press down, you get a nice little impression on the leaf. You don't have to do that but it just adds something to it. So I'm going to do that with all seven of my leaves and I'll sort of put a little bit of a curve in them as well and then they are ready to go when we put our pieces together and start to decorate our photo frame. So we're going to add the gold crackle around the outside of our frame so we're going to take the rest of our scrap clay Put it all together, make sure there's no air trapped inside and put it through on a medium setting on the pasta machine, so setting number three in my case. And we're going to come out with a nice big sheet and we want it probably about half an inch, um, just over sort of about two centimetres wider than our template. Take your gold leaf layer and gently lay it on top of your clay. I'm just going to use the sheet just to rub it on, make sure there's, again there's no air trapped underneath. If you wanted the full sheet with no crackle then obviously you could put it on over the top of your piece just like that. I'm going to put those pieces to one side to use later on some other project. But I want a bit of crackle so I'm going to put it through, this is setting number three, so I'm going to put it through setting number four in that direction to get a little bit of crackle, then turn it 90 degrees and put it through setting number five in the other direction. That'll give me a nice, even, gentle crackle on the surface with that little bit of um, scrap clay dark showing through. Okay, there we go, nice bit of crackle on our piece. And now we're ready to start the full decoration of our photo frame.
So the first thing I'm going to do is put liquid, I'll take, take my sheet out and I'm going to put some liquid polymer clay around the edge and just on the top of this piece and I'll use my finger for this. We don't want enough to make it um, slippy, just enough to make it tacky or sticky. So don't overdo it. Be a little careful when you're going down this edge, obviously you don't want to press that too far in. Don't want it to um, bulge or break. And we don't want any on the back, just on the side and this top piece. And take your crackle layer and lay it over the top. So I'm more than happy for it to dip in the middle, but what I'm trying to do is to make sure that I've got no air trapped along these top edges. So I'm very gently with my finger just going to roll across. With my knife I'm going to put a, an X in the middle, not going right up to the edges but just giving it room that that can move if it needs to. And now what we're going to do is persuade it around the edges. Because this is polymer clay where it's at an edge you can just very gently with your fingers just press in, you don't need to cut the corners Just take your time and gently press in to round the clay around those corners. When it comes to the edge, just press firmly down with your finger. So you're going to fold it over the edge and again roll around a corner. When you've done one side, and because I've got the bottom here, I'm just going to pull that hinge away. You can then either with your tissue blade or your craft knife just run along level with the edge. Just turning it gently on one side. Do the same. You can always go part way down an edge so you get the corners nice. You can always go back and neaten off if it doesn't come out the first time. And just slowly work your way round the corners and that bottom edge. Having done it once, you can go back, gently press the edges down, and then go and neaten off any excess from underneath. We'll leave the top edge for a moment or two. Let's go and do the middle bit. So I'm going to go up more towards the corner but not tight into the corner. And then either using um, something round like the bottom end of your um, paintbrush or I'm going to use a little craft knife here. I'm just going to push clay. Start with my with my fingers and then when I get up towards a corner just pushing the clay into the corner and round those corner edges and just do the same as that all the way around all four corners. And then you should be able to feel across to where the gap is underneath and just take the clay away whilst leaving the inner edge nicely gilded. And then the last bit to do is the top edge. So if it's come away like mine has because obviously when I chopped it it was pressed down flat and now it's come open. Push it back and then find the gap in the middle with your craft knife and just run down through. Then open it up slightly. And what you should be able to do is to just take off the excess from the top and the bottom so you get left with a nice opening.
okay so there's our piece finished and I'm going to make sure I don't do any damage from this point on by slipping back a piece of cardboard into place. So now we can start the actual decoration with the forget-me-nots and leaves so I'm going to put my two pieces of cardboard there pop him down on the tile and from this point on I'm going to work on the tile. First thing I'm going to add are the stems and I'm going to do that by taking some of that um, mid green, the brighter green that we had left over and what I've done already I've also got myself a bit ahead of the game so as well as doing the leaves I've also done the stems and I've got the other bits ready which I'll come on to in just a minute but for this one all we're going to do is as with this piece just roll yourself out a nice long piece it doesn't have to be even because of course this is a natural thing and most of this is going to get covered over by the leaves and the petals but all I'm doing is I'm rolling and as I'm rolling so I'm spreading my fingers if you do have an extruder and you're not happy or not very comfortable rolling then obviously use the extruder instead and we're just sort of rolling it if you get to a bit that's too thin you can just loop that together and re-roll it and I'm looking for a piece that's sort of going to go from up here and down to the corner. So once I've got my pieces ready and I know what I'm doing, I'm going to get the liquid clay again and with a paintbrush I'm just going to add a sort of a very rough sort of area of clay, just dabbing it on here and there, going around the outside where I know I'm going to be adding my pattern. So I'm going to go a little bit over the top here, but this side I'm just really going to go up to about that stage on the side but then come all the way down and go around the bottom as well and just having a little bit of liquid clay just helps the other clay stick on top and now I can just put this in place I'm going to do sort of backwards and forwards motion till it comes down to the bottom. I'm just going to pinch it off with my finger because I've already got this one done. This one can start sort of put the narrow end to the top. That one can start up there and again just meander its way down around and more or less again down to the corner. And what I then do is take some tiny bits, and just pull them nice and thin, doesn't matter if they break off, and then have some extra bits, just sort of branches shooting off from the main stem. And as I mentioned, I'd already got some ready from the pieces I've got here. Don't have to worry too much about where they join because they say most of this will be covered up with the petals but just work your way down putting them where you think they ought to go and because you've got that little bit of liquid clay already on the top surface it should just stick on quite happily thing I'm going to put on are the leaves so I'm going to put them sort of roughly in place but not too much um, because you want to sort of put the flowers in between them um, over and under them as we put them on so I'll put, put one up there so I actually probably have one coming around this corner somewhere perhaps have another one sort of coming out there perhaps one coming here and then three probably push him around slightly more and then three sort of towards the middle or this corner point where most of the decoration is coming from. So those are the leaves on, you can always add more um, later and so say I haven't pressed them on hard because I will pick them up at times when I'm going to put the actual petals on. So the next thing we need to do are the little tiny little buds that come at the top of all these pieces. So for that we're using that darker 
purpley coloured clay and as before we're just going to take a piece do it in a roll and pull out a long thin sausage now these need to be quite small so you want your sausage to go very thin but it doesn't need to be even because you want lots of different size pieces and for each of these tip bits I'm going to do five so I'm going to need 45 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pieces off roll them into a ball the palm of my hand and then just roll them slightly more into a lozenge shape and luckily I've already done that so here are all my pieces ready to go and what as I said they, some are small and some are large so the small pieces I put towards the top and I'm just going to go out and away from the top of my piece so one there another one there and the good thing about having the card here is of course you can put your fingers on it as a resting place and again because you've got the bit of clay there already it should just sort of stick on so something a bit like that where they're sort of fanning out and then to make sure they stick with the blunt side of my craft knife I'm just going to press down at the base of each one so that's one set done and I'm just going to do exactly the same for the other eight and I'll bring you back when I've got that done so there are all the buds done and then the last thing of course to do is to do our slices of the actual petal cane. Now as you probably spotted when I pulled that bit through that I did earlier, I've already cut all of my slices. But just to show you, when I chop down, as I mentioned, I will chop. Let me do it on the side because normally I do it straight over the top so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll automatically go back and reshape because wherever you've chopped there is that tendency for the cane to go flat. So I'll take five slices and then I will reformulate or um, refinesse the shape of the cane, take another five and do the same again. So here we have all of our slices ready to go. And for the vast majority, I am going to put five slices on. So I'll just put them on so the white middles aren't quite touching but they're pretty close to each other so that's how I'll add a single flower and once you've got your single flower we need that little bit of yellow and that little bit of brown now the yellow again is going to be quite a small roll and having got that I'm just going to take off a piece roll it into a ball. Before I do that and add that into the centre again with that blunt end of my craft knife just to set these petals nicely I'm going to roll from the outside going in towards the middle but just halfway up the petal so I'm pressing in at the top but just creating a little bit of a, a divot halfway up and it just helps the petal sit against the background keeps it in place and also creates a little bit of depth into our petal. The yellow then has a little roll and sits in the middle. With a cocktail stick I'm just going to press down in the middle and give it a jiggle to effectively open out a hole and then the brown we want to go really really small and thin with. And we're going to take a teeny tiny little piece of the brown, roll that into a ball, and then that just sits in the middle of the piece. And again, just push that in with a cocktail stick. So that is the single flower done. The other way I will do it sometimes is to do a half flower. And to do that, I get three petals. So I'll do a little one coming off the side here so I'll put my first two flower petals on let's put him up here put them so the whites are pretty close to each other and touching and this bottom one I will actually chop off 
the bottom. Lay that so it's up against the side and then just take off the square side slightly to make it slightly more shaped and that gives you a little half flower. And I will continue doing that, adding the petals in either a full flower or half flower all the way around this side and then go back and already that, around that side. And you'll notice that times, times I'll lift the leaf up to perhaps put the petals underneath the leaf, other times I'll put the petals on top of the leaf. You can obviously have them folding around the sides, going slightly on the inside, but just be aware that the polymer clay when it's baked will be slightly fragile, so don't have them sticky off in such a way that it's easy for them to get knocked or banged out of place. So I will carry on doing that, building up the flowers and the patterns, but I will fast forward so you don't have to sit there for ages and watch me doing it. Okay, so there we are with the piece finished and the decoration done around the outside. I've just made sure that all these pieces are pressed down nicely if they're not sticking up so they're not likely to break off. Um, push them in where you want to. I've got the piece of card sat underneath and all I will do is I will tent the whole piece with a piece of aluminium foil, not so it's touching the frame but so it tents it over the top just for to protect it should the oven spike during baking and as before bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using and once that's done the only thing we've got left to do is put the ribbon on the back and the piece is finished so with the piece cooled from the oven the last bit to do is to put the little ribbon in so I've gone just over two inches um, about five to five and a half or six centimeters I've got a little bit of super glue so it's going kind to of Gently turn him on the back, lay him nicely down, lift up your piece there and then I'm going to mark, just with a pencil again, roughly where I want the end of the ribbon to be so that I can put a couple of dobs of super glue down. And then just put that on. And hold it in place and of course the great thing about super glue is it won't take long to go off. Once it's gone off I'm just going to hold the piece in place and again make sure I can see with a pencil where the mark was. Another couple of blobs of glue on that side and then we will take that piece down. So I know I'm probably doing it so you can't see here but I'm actually taking it down till it meets up 
with the super glue and again just press the cocktail stick on and just hold it in place until it sticks. Final thing to do, I've taken a piece of white card and a little bit of the acetate that I mentioned earlier and using this as a guide and then I measured across the top so it's going to fit nicely in. Put it both those pieces on and then when the glue's finished drying I'm just going to get myself a photograph, put it between those two pieces and then they just slot inside the groove and your photo frame is ready to go with your picture inside. And with the ribbon now in place, so it's going to hold it nicely open, I've just popped a little photo inside of one of our dogs who we sadly lost a few years ago. Um, so it is definitely a forget-me-not little photo frame and that'll be a lovely reminder of us to have on the mantelpiece whenever we think of her. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and have great fun and make some of your own and I'd love to see photos of what you do if you get a chance. As always, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I have a feeling I'm going to be making quite a few more of these and probably with some different decorations around the outside as well. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>